above Jerusalem is filled with prayers and dreams. Like the air above cities with heavy industry, hard to breathe. From time to time, a new shipment of history arrives. History is both a blessing and a curse for Jerusalem, a city steeped in religious and nationalistic yearnings. Poets such as Israel's Yehuda Amichai have sought to catch its spirit, while empires have fought to control its holy ground. When Palestinian and Israeli politicians demand sovereignty over Jerusalem, they're demanding control of this place. Muslims call it Al-Haram al-Sharif. It's Islam's third holiest site, the place where the Prophet Muhammad ascended to heaven. Jews know it as the Temple Mount. Their most sacred shrine is the Western Wall, all that remains of the ancient Second Temple, which they believe must be rebuilt before the Messiah can come. But Jerusalem is much more than this hallowed hilltop, or the one square kilometre of winding alleyways which make up the old city. Jerusalem today is a 128 square kilometre municipality, as big as Paris. But it's not the population which pushes the city limits here, it's politics. Absolutely, firmly holding the position that Israel should have complete comprehensive sovereignty over all of Jerusalem. Omar, he is not suffering from occupation. Uh, me as Khalil, I was 18 when the Israel occupied East Jerusalem and now I am 50. Israeli troops seized East Jerusalem from Jordan during the 1967 Arab-Israeli War. This reunited the city for the first time in almost two decades. But the world has never recognized Israel's military occupation of East Jerusalem. And Palestinians say the divide between the city's Arab and Jewish residents is as wide as ever. When you're looking for this map, you can see Jerusalem united. But when you go deeply, united is divided. Here you see it, this is how the Israel surrounded the Arab Palestinian built up area by like they put it all in between sandwich. You see it's settlement in east, settlement in west. So if we look at East Jerusalem then, um, the blue shaded areas yes. are the Jewish areas. Yes, the blue area. So they built around fifteen settlement inside East Jerusalem. Khalil Tufagji is the geographer at Orient House, the de facto town hall in Palestinian populated East Jerusalem. He says Israel's aim is to create a predominantly Jewish Jerusalem to strengthen its claim on the city. Since 1967, Israel has trebled the size of the municipality, he says, encouraged Jewish settlement and used discriminatory policies to drive Palestinians out of the city. Their aim or their goal forever, this is, will be Jerusalem under Israel control forever. For Palestinians, the question of who controls Jerusalem can be a life or death matter. Two years ago, at the age of 16, Yasser Abu Khalaf's life changed dramatically. Yasser had advanced neuroblastoma, a cancer often fatal in young children. It was a devastating blow, but not the end of the bad news, as Yasser's mother Faisal was soon to discover. Yasser's health insurance, his right as a Jerusalem resident, had been cancelled because investigators said his family had moved outside the city borders. Were it not for Dr Nili Ramu's fundraising efforts, Yasser's family would never have been able to pay for his treatment, chemotherapy, radiation and surgery. While grateful for the hospital's help, Yasser's father, Azmi, is angry with the Israeli government. Because the Jews are not only in Kalandia, but in Kalandia, 
بسبعين كيلو بثمانين كيلو وبياخذ كل حقوقه عادي طبيعي يعني Damascus Gate is the main thoroughfare from East Jerusalem into the Old City. The Abu Khalafs consider this their backyard. I was born here, and my father is born here, and my grandfather is born here, and Yasser is born here. All the family is born in the Old City. Fawaz is Yasser's cousin. He spearheaded a two-and-a-half-year campaign to have the family's residency rights reinstated. And you see how many people here now. More than 32,000 people live shoulder to shoulder within these medieval walls. In Greater Jerusalem, Palestinians are the minority. Here, they're the bulk of the population. But Israel still rules the roost. We are... Uh behind the house of Yasser of Horn. At the very least, Palestinians want sovereignty over Islam's holy sites and the three Arab-dominated areas of the old city, the Armenian, Christian and Muslim quarters. Marhaba. Hello. Marhaba. Marhaba. Assalamu alaikum. Ahlan, ahlan, ahlan. Ahlan, tfaddal, tfaddal, ahmed, tfaddal, tfaddal, tfaddal. <laughs> it's not hard to see why Yasser's family decided to move. 13 people live here, there's no space for 14 more. The house is a series of rooms connected by covered exterior stairways. The kitchen looks quite new. Yes. Extensions are often yes, built illegally. Residents say they have little choice. They either can't afford permits or simply can't comply with them. The difficulties of life in the old city have left some Palestinian families open to selling, and in the Muslim quarter, there's always a ready buyer, often Jewish. Fawaz's grandmother says Jewish prospectors offered her $50,000 and a new house if she'd leave. <laughs> But some Palestinians do sell. Example, you see here 10 families, Palestinian people, and you see one or two Jewish inside. Why? Why he's coming here? What we want to do here? Jerusalem is the capital of Israel, and that's how it should be. And our goal is to... to to, to fill it up with, the, with Jews living it normally, comfortably. Avital Schwartz feels right at home in the Muslim quarter. Her daughter Sherelle more so. It's the only home she's known. They moved in two years ago, part of the Aterit Kohanim settler movement, which seeks to reclaim this neighborhood for Jews. We have here people that want to kill us just for living here. That's a problem I have as a Jew. So the solution we found is just living here and letting the Arabs know, listen, this is our country, we live here. You want to come along? Please come. You want to kill me for living here? You can't do that. This is my country. Avital's compound has four apartments. Jewish settlers live in three of them, Christian Arabs in the other. Avital says relations are cool but cordial. The building itself gained notoriety in the mid-1980s when Ariel Sharon, now Israel's right-wing opposition leader, bought one of the flats. Not so much as a residence, but a political statement. The solution for uh, peaceful coexistence in Jerusalem, in, say, in uh, all the other places in the land of Israel, is a massive Jewish presence. <laughs> Left-wing Israelis took to the streets in protest, while settlers continued their quiet march on the Muslim quarter. Avital Schwartz rarely ventures out without a security escort.
The Jewish and Muslim communities here coexist, but there's no mutual trust. This was a mixed neighborhood early this century, but many Jews left in the 1920s and 30s when Arab riots erupted across Palestine in protest against the influx of Jewish migrants. Over a month, nearly 40 people have been killed in the disturbances. At the Wailing Wall, refugees under British protection leave their quarters where terrorists have instituted the rule of force. Today, the Jewish community is growing again. So is Palestinian disquiet. There are more than 60 settler families in the Muslim quarter, and apparently a waiting list. There's something very natural, just coming back to the place that belonged to us thousands of years, and now it's possible for us to come back. It says in, in the Bible that the streets of Jerusalem would be filled of children playing in it. Do you think there'll come a day when uh, Shiro might be able to play on the streets without security, happily with her Palestinian neighbors? I don't know. I, I, as I said, I'm not thinking about it. It's not a thing that you wake up in the morning and you say, would my child play with a Palestinian child? In your ideal world, what is the future of Jerusalem? Um, the capital of Israel filled with Jews and Jews just living everywhere and their children playing around. Yeah, that's, that's how I, I would want to see it and I believe it will be. The driving force behind a Teret Kohanim is a belief in the divine right of Jews to live and rule in Jerusalem. Avital's husband Moshe is one of more than 200 students at the movement's yeshiva, a rabbinical school in the Muslim quarter. Here they study Judaism's holy texts and their application in the modern world. Executive Director Yossi Boimel says history shows that giving ground, literally or figuratively, has never helped the Jewish cause. The, the path to peace is rather to absolve our Arab neighbors of the, of the commandment of jihad, which means that we have to be strong, that we have to be forceful, uh, we have to be fair, but we have to be strong. For example, every, every time uh, a Jew was killed in the old city, th three buildings would go up for Jews in the Muslim quarter, then they would stop killing Jews because it's counterproductive to carry out the jihad here. And that's the, that's the beginning of the path to peace. But that's not how the neighbors see it. Two years ago, settlers moved onto this land in the Muslim quarter to avenge the murder of a fellow yeshiva student stabbed to death by a Palestinian. Police endeavoured to restrain angry Palestinian legislators and protesters who tore down one of the illegal structures. The city council ordered settlers to remove the rest. Do Palestinians have any claim to sovereignty over any part of Jerusalem? No. Uh, I, I have, don't, don't, don't get me wrong, uh, my Palestinian neighbors here are people with, with human rights, with civil rights, with political rights. I'm not saying they're not, they're not equal to anybody else. What I am saying is that there is no greater, no stronger claim than the Jewish claim to, to Jerusalem. But in this city of layered history, everyone has a claim, including Nahla Asali. A professor of literature, she also helps run a Palestinian community centre in the Old City. She comes from one of Jerusalem's oldest and most prestigious Muslim families. But most of their wealth, she says, is now in Israeli hands. We drive out of the Old City through Jaffa Gate. This is West Jerusalem, greener and more affluent than the East. This is the German colony. The neighborhoods we pass are nearly all Jewish. It wasn't always that way. I don't remember. On one of these streets, we used to go to the nursery school in one of these streets. This is where Professor Asali spent the first 10 years of her life. Many of the old Arab houses remain, 
They've made this the area a real estate agent's dream. Can easily be identified. This is my aunt's house. We used to come and visit with my aunt. Hello, Al Yamin. There are three and a half million Palestinian refugees. No. Professor Asali doesn't fit the stereotype. But she fled her home during the Arab-Israeli War of 1948 and has no better chance of moving back home than a refugee sitting in Lebanon. My, my grandmother lived upstairs. Uh, this is the house I was born in mm -hmm. in 1938. The right Professor Asali didn't expect to come face to face with the man who moved into her home immediately after her family fled. Can you, can you ask this man? Did he, this he man live here? Does he or doesn't he know that this house belonged to an Arab? Does he or doesn't he? Sure, he knows it belongs he knows. to Arabs. He knows. Sure, like, he knows like that. I, listen, my, yeah. my dear lady, my parents are coming from Libya. You know, they okay. was born in Libya. In 51, they has been told to go away, to take okay. the stuff and go away. So actually my family and my grandmother family and my grandfather no, no, family has a lot of houses in Libya, which we never Again, knew. dear lady, you go claim your rights in Libya. I have a right to claim my rights here. You have, or, you have you your right to claim, so I hope you, our government will give will you, will give you some uh, money for some it. Some money. You if can't. I don't want the money, I want this house. No, you I can't have this here. house. Sorry, you ran away. You ran I did away. not. Nobody told you take your stuff and run away. Nobody. You made us poor when all our property disappeared. You in a month. Live, you could, nobody would fight, want to fight with you. We offered you to be a peace. Okay. You said no. You we started no. the fight in 48, and okay. then you come from us okay. and asking this house. Now, I'm sorry. You, you can go back. You see, you, you, when I'm saying something, you know, something, dividing, why you you know me, your you know King right. Solomon about dividing the baby. You know the story. It's in your Bible. Let's go, please. And I can't stand any more of this. She you live, when she get, when she, you when she live like in my house. Okay. There are no easy ways to split control of Jerusalem. Someone will always feel cheated. The view from the mayoral office in West Jerusalem is that the political geography must remain the same. Suddenly, however, Mayor Ehud Olmert wants to offer East Jerusalem's 200,000 Palestinian residents a sweetener. Full Israeli citizenship with all its social welfare and economic benefits. All lead to the inevitable conclusion that the Palestinians prefer to have Israeli sovereignty over all of the city. And I think that our obligation to offer them full Israeli citizenship immediately, immediately, in the state of Israel as part and parcel of the state of Israel and I call the Prime Minister to immediately move towards this. Few Palestinians would dare publicly acknowledge such an offer. They'd be branded traitors. But in the Palestinian village of Sur Bahir, within the Jerusalem municipality, the mayor has found some unlikely support. A call for a United Nations run referendum on East Jerusalem's future. Resident Zuhir Hamdan doesn't want to live under what he terms the mafia rule of Yasser Arafat. Neither, he claims, to thousands of other East Jerusalem residents, though he won't reveal any names. It's true many Palestinians worry about the viability of an independent Palestine, its economic strength and democratic values. But Arab residents of East Jerusalem will not miss queuing for hours outside Israeli government offices to justify their existence. At the Abu Khalaf home, the mood is one of celebration. Yasser is back from hospital with a new Jerusalem identity card. 
His sister is home with a new baby. Yasser doesn't yet have a clean bill of health, but his battle for national medical insurance is over. In two months, he'll know his fate. Jerusalem's Palestinian <laughs> residents may have to wait a little longer. <laughs>